Hello, this is Chris Hammond with ChrisTalk.com, and welcome to the second video in our DNN9 video series. In this video, I'm going to walk you through installing DNN9. Now, I'm going to be installing DNN9 in a local development environment on a virtual machine, but you can go through most of the same steps that I'm going to go through here if you were installing it into a production web server. Just wherever I reference dnndev.me as the do domain name, you would simply change that to whatever domain name you'll be utilizing when you set up your DNN9 website. So in this video, we're going to go and download the install package for DNN9. We're going to grab the latest 9.0.1 package. And I'll show you how to find that going to github.com slash DNN software. And I'll show you from there where to navigate down into on GitHub to get the files. After that, we'll extract those files. We need to then create the site in IIS. We'll have to set up the file system and the permissions for that site. And then we'll go ahead and run through the installation wizard. Now, in our previous video, I walked you through the process of installing IIS and the requirements necessary within IIS. I also walked you through the process of installing Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition and SQL Express. Now, SQL Express is gonna be an important fact there because when we walk through the installation wizard in our DNN9 install, we're going to utilize SQL Express, which really means we don't have to do much in terms of our database and setting up that configuration during this installation process. So let's go ahead and navigate over here to our virtual machine where we're going to go through that installation process. So we're going to start by navigating to github.com slash DNN software and take in, go into the DNN software GitHub page. We're going to go into the dnn.platform repository. From there, we're going to navigate to the releases section right here on the page. And we're going to utilize, utilize that uh, 901 release from DNN about 18 days ago. If you scroll down in underneath that release, you'll find that there are a number of different packages available for installation. We are simply going to use the install package. I always use the install package when I'm setting DNN up. I don't use the source package. I don't need the symbols or the upgrade package during a fresh installation. The source package can be useful if you do want to do development of the DNN platform, but it's not recommended for module developers, theme developers, or someone who's managing a DNN website. Now, I've already downloaded it, the zip file for DNN, so I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my downloads folder where I have that file. So here we've got the DNN platform 9.0.1. Dot one four two underscore install file. This is a zip file. First thing we're going to do is right click on that zip file. We're going to choose properties, and within the properties, we're going to check the unblock option. This tells Windows, hey, we trust this file. I want to take all of the contents in that file and make sure they get extracted. So I'm going to right click now that I've clicked OK and choose extract all. This will extract to a local folder here within the downloads folder. Now it might take a few moments as this zip file is 64 uh, megabytes in size. So there's quite a few files inside of that. Go ahead and pause the video while the process completes. Now once that extraction, extraction completes, we can see that Windows will open up the file or the folder where all of those files have been extracted. I'm gonna click inside of that folder here somewhere, press Control A and then Control C or right click and press or choose copy. So I'm essentially copying those files. We're gonna copy those into a website directory that we're going to create in the next step in our process. So I'm going to navigate over here to my C drive. Now, whenever I set up a development environment, I typically will create a websites folder in the root of my C drive. So I'm going to right click, choose new folder, and then create that folder called websites. I'm going to navigate into that folder, and I'm going to create an additional folder called dnndev.me. Now, this is a domain name that is owned by DNN software, but it's actually set up with the DNS pointing to 127.0.0.1. So that means anyone who tries to access that particular domain name will always be redirected back to their local IP address. This is very handy for DNN development. So I always set up my development websites 
with that particular domain name in use. And we'll go through that process in IIS here in a few moments. Before we do that, we need to go into the folder. We're going to right click and we're going to paste all of the contents of the DNN zip file that we extracted into this dnndev.me folder. Now our next step, we're going to go to the start menu within Windows, and we're going to type in inetmgr. This will load up the Internet Information Services Manager. This allows us to manage the websites on a Windows machine. So we can simply navigate on the left into the machine name, then into the sites folder, and we'll see we have a single default website to start with, but we're gonna go ahead and add a new website, right-clicking on sites and choosing to add. Now, I'm gonna give the website a name called dnndev.me, and then the physical path, I'm gonna put in that path, c colon slash website slash dnndev.me. Now, you can put your files for your DNN site in other folders or directories. That's fine. I do recommend that you follow this approach if you're setting up DNN for the first time. If you follow my steps word for word, you very likely will have a successful installation. If you do not follow them, you may run into other problems that are then very hard to troubleshoot. So the next thing we need to do is down on the host name option, we're going to put in the words dnndev.me again. From there, we can go ahead and click OK, and that will configure our website in IIS. Before we try to access our site, though, we need to do one final step. We're going to go back to our C websites folder, and we're going to right click on the dnndev.me folder. We're going to choose properties, and we're going to choose the security tab. Now, from here, we're going to click edit and then we're gonna click add. What we need to do now is we need to add a user here that is used by the application pool or the web server. It has a user attached to the application pool that's running our website. We need to give that user permissions on this particular folder. So I'm gonna to try to remember exactly what it is here to start. It's IIS space app pool. So three P's in the middle there backslash dnndev.me. We can see if we got that correct by clicking on the check names option. Now, if your computer is on a domain, you may have to click on the locations option and then at the very top, choose your computer as the location instead of the domain. Now, from there, we can go ahead and click OK. Now we have our dnndev.me user account listed there. We want to select that and we're going to give the user account modify allow control. So we're saying allow this user to have full modify rights to this particular directory and all the files within that directory. Now I'm going to go ahead and click apply and then click OK. And at this point, we've set up IIS. We've set up our folder and our file system. So really, the next step for us is to simply try to navigate to our site. The way we're going to do that is go back to our browser. We're going to go to HTTP colon slash slash dnndev.me and go ahead and hit enter. Now, it'll take a moment for you, the web server to compile the site for the first time and load this up. But if, if everything's successful, we should see the installation wizard appear within our DNN website. Now, we haven't done anything from a database perspective. Now, why is that? At this point, we are utilizing SQL Express, a local copy of SQL Express. So we're not going to actually have to configure anything from a database perspective. I'm going to go ahead and type in a password here for our super user account, the host account that's going to be created. You can change that host account name if you'd like here during this process. You can also change the email address attached to that host account, that super user account, you can always go back and change the email later as well. From there, we have some default information for the website name, the template, and the language. Not even going to worry about changing those at this point. The next option is our database information. And if we are using SQL Express, I can simply leave it as default as selected here. If you are installing against a different version of SQL Server, or a remote SQL Server, you would have to choose the custom option. And from there, you can choose to utilize the information here to provide the server name, the database name, and if you're utilizing an object qualifier. 
for us. I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to go back to the default option here. Now, the next option underneath the installation wizard is the product improvement program. We're going to unselect that. We don't want to send any anonymous information from our website back to DNN Corp. At this point, we can go ahead and click continue, and that will go through the installation process there for our DNN site. Now, I'll pause the video as it finishes up the scripts here, and we'll see our DNN installation completed here in just a few moments. All right, so we've got 100% success on the installation process here. We now have the option to click the visit the website button. That will take us to our newly installed local instance of DNN 9. You know, we'll wait for that to load up here. And we'll start talking about the next video that's coming in our DNN 9 video series. In that video, we're going to start to give you some of the introductions into the DNN platform, how you can utilize some of the features within the DNN platform. We'll also have some videos around some of the changes from DNN 8 and earlier versions of DNN to this latest DNN 9 site. Now you can see that we've gone to our dnndev.me website now, and we are logged in with the host or super user account. From there, we have access to the persona bar, which is the options here on the left. This is the major change from earlier versions of DNN where you had a control panel running across the top of the site. We're not going to dig into the, any more details right now in this video, but please check out the, the next round of videos in our DNN 9 video series. This is Chris Hammond with ChrisDoc.com. Thank you for watching.